The history of Gibraltar portrays how the rock gained an importance and a reputation far exceeding its size, influencing and shaping the people who came to reside here over the centuries. Prehistoric Evidence of hominid inhabitation of the rock dates back to the Neanderthals. A Neanderthal skull was discovered in Forbes's quarry in 1848, prior to the original discovery in the Neander Valley. In 1926, the skull of a Neanderthal child was found in Devil's Tower. Mousterian deposits found at Gaham's Cave, which are associated with Neanderthals in Europe, have been dated to as recently as 28,000 to 24,000 BP, leading to suggestions that Gibraltar was one of the last places of Neanderthal habitation. Modern humans apparently visited the Gibraltar area in prehistoric times after the Neanderthal occupancy, while the rest of Europe was cooling. The area around Gibraltar back then resembled a European Serengeti. Leopards, hyenas, lynxes, wolves, and bears lived among wild cattle, horses, deer, ibexes, oryxes, and rhinos, all surrounded by olive trees and stone pines, with partridges and ducks overhead, tortoises in the underbrush and mussels, limpets, and other shellfish in the waters. Clive Finlayson, evolutionary biologist at the Gibraltar Museum said, "...this natural richness of wildlife and plants in the nearby sandy plains, woodlands, shrublands, wetlands, cliffs and coastline probably helped the Neanderthals to persist." Evidence at the cave shows the Neanderthals of Gibraltar likely used it as a shelter. For 100,000 years, Cro-Magnon man took over Gibraltar around 24,000 BCE. Ancient The Phoenicians are known to have visited the rock circa 950 BC and named the rock Kalpa. The Carthaginians also visited. However, neither group appears to have settled permanently. Plato refers to Gibraltar as one of the pillars of Hercules along with Jebel Musa or Monte Hacho on the other side of the strait. The Romans visited Gibraltar, but no permanent settlement was established. Following the fall of the Western Roman Empire, Gibraltar was occupied by the Vandals and later the Goths' kingdoms. The Vandals did not remain for long although the Visigoths remained on the Iberian Peninsula from 414 to 711. The Gibraltar area and the rest of the South Iberian Peninsula was part of the Byzantine Empire during the second part of the 6th century, later reverting to the Visigoth Kingdom. Muslim rule 711 the 30th of April the Umayyad general Tariq ibn Ziyad leading a Berber dominated army sailed across the strait from Ceuta he first attempted to land on Al Jazeera's but failed upon his failure he landed undetected at the southern point of the rock from present day Morocco in his quest for Spain it was here that Gibraltar was named coming from the Arabian words Gabal al Tariq the mountain of Tariq Little was built during the first four centuries of Moorish control see Reconquista. 1160 The Almohad Sultan Abd al mumin ordered that a permanent settlement, including a castle, be built. It received the name of Medinat al-Fath city of the victory. On completion of the works in the town, the Sultan crossed the strait to inspect the works and stayed in Gibraltar for two months. The tower of homage of the castle remains standing today Moorish castle, 1231 After the collapse of the Almohad Empire, Gibraltar was taken by Ibn Hud, Taifa Emir of Mercia. 1237 Following the death of Ibn Hud, his domains were handed over to Muhammad ibn al Amar, the founder of the Nazra Kingdom of Granada. Therefore, Gibraltar changed hands again. 1274 The second Nazra king, Muhammad II al Faqih, gave Gibraltar over to the Marinids, as payment for their help against the Christian kingdoms. 1309 While the King Ferdinand IV of Castile laid siege on Algeciras, Alonso Pérez de Guzmán known to the Spanish records as Guzmán el Bueno was sent to capture the town. This was the first siege of Gibraltar. The Castilians took the upper rock from where the town was bombarded. The garrison surrendered after one month. Gibraltar then had about 1,500 inhabitants. 1310 the 31st of January Gibraltar was granted its first charter by the King Ferdinand IV of Castile 
Being considered a high-risk town, the charter included incentives to settle there such as the offering of freedom from justice to anyone who lived in Gibraltar for one year and one day. This fact marked the establishment of the Gibraltar Council. 1316 Gibraltar was unsuccessfully besieged by the Nazra Cade Yahya Second Siege of Gibraltar. 1333 June, a Marinid army, led by Abd al-Malik, the son of Abul Hassan, the Marinid Sultan, recovered Gibraltar. After a five-month siege, Third Siege of Gibraltar, King Alfonso XI of Castile attempted to retake Gibraltar aided by the fleet of the Castilian Admiral Alonso Joffrey Tenorio. Even a ditch was dug across the isthmus. While laying the siege, the king was attacked by a Nazra army from Granada. Therefore, the siege ended in a truce, allowing the Marinids to keep Gibraltar. Fourth Siege of Gibraltar. Point one three four four March. After the two-year siege of Algeciras, thirteen forty two to thirteen forty four, Algeciras was taken over by the Castilian forces. Therefore, Gibraltar became the main Marinid port in the Iberian Peninsula. During the siege, Gibraltar played a key role as the supply base of the besieged. 1349 Gibraltar was unsuccessfully besieged by the Castilian forces led by the King Alfonso XI. 1350 The siege was resumed by Alfonso XI. It was again unsuccessful, mainly due to the arrival of the Black Death, which decimated the besiegers, causing the death of the king. Fifth siege of Gibraltar. 1369 As the civil war in Castile came to an end, with the murder of King Peter I by the pretender Henry to be known as Henry II, the Nazra king of Granada, Muhammad V, former ally of Peter, took over Algeciras after the three-day siege of Algeciras 1369. Ten years later the city was razed out to the ground, and its harbour made unusable. This fact increased again the importance of Gibraltar, yet in Marinid hands, in the straight trade. A subsequent truce was signed between Muhammad and Henry, preventing the Christian kings from attempting to recover the city. 1374 Following a period of internal instability in the Marinid Sultanate of Fez, Abu al-Abbas Ahmad of Fez, asked for Muhammad V of Granada help. Possibly as a condition of the alliance or as reward for Muhammad's successful expedition to Africa, Gibraltar was handed over to the Nazrids of Granada. 1410 The garrison in Gibraltar mutinied against the king of Granada and declared for the king of Fez, Fade. Fade sent his brother Abu Sa'id over to Gibraltar to take possession of the city. He also took over other Nazra ports such as Marbella and Estepona. 1411 The son of Yusuf III of Granada, Ahmad, recovered Marbella and Estepona. Next, it laid siege to Gibraltar, sixth siege of Gibraltar and recovered the city for the kingdom of Granada. 1436 Enrique de Guzman, second count of Niebla, with large estates in southern Andalusia, assaulted Gibraltar. However, his attack was repelled and Castilian forces suffer heavy losses Seventh Siege of Gibraltar. <laughs> <laughs> Castilian, Spanish rule 1462 the 20th of August Castilian forces captured Gibraltar 8th siege of Gibraltar see Reconquista an immediate dispute broke out between the house of Medina Sidonia the Guzman family and the house of Arcos the Ponce de Leon family about the possession of the town finally the initiative of Juan Alonso de Guzman first duke of Medina Sidonia succeeded and he took possession of the town as personal property However, the King of Castile, Henry IV, declared Gibraltar to be crown property and not the personal property of the Guzman family. Henry IV restored the charter granted to Gibraltar in 1310 and took two additional measures, the lands previously belonging to Algeciras destroyed in 1369 were granted to Gibraltar, and the status of collegiate church was solicited from the Pope Pius II and granted to the parish church of St. Mary the Crown Spanish, Iglesia Periquial de Santa Maria la Coronada, now the Cathedral of St. Mary the Crown, on the site of the old main Moorish mosque. Saint Bernard of Clairvaux, whose feast falls on 20 August, became the patron saint of Gibraltar. 1463 In a tour through Andalusia, Henry IV was the first Christian monarch to visit Gibraltar. 1467 July, in the midst of a nobility revolt against the king, the forces of the Duke of Medina Sidonia, after a 16-month siege, took Gibraltar. Alfonso of Castile, half-brother of Henry IV and puppet pretender handled by the nobility, granted him the lordship of Gibraltar, 9th siege of Gibraltar. 
1469 the 3rd of June after the death of Alfonso de Castilla and the first Duke of Medina Sidonia his son and heir Enrique de Guzman second Duke of Medina Sidonia changed side and in reward saw the status of Gibraltar as part of the domains of the Duke confirmed by the Queen Isabella the first of Castile 1470 the 20th of December a new charter was granted to the town of Gibraltar now a nobiliary town based in the Antiquira Charter 1478 the 30th of September the Catholic monarchs granted the title of Marquis of Gibraltar to the Duke of Medina Sidonia 1479 the 20th of January Queen Isabella the first of Castile and King Ferdinand the second of Aragon the Catholic monarchs jointly rule the kingdoms of Castile and Aragon including Gibraltar 1492 the 31st of March after conquering Granada the Catholic monarchs signed the Alhambra decree ordering the expulsion of the Jews from Spain to take effect from the 31st of July 1492 many passed through Gibraltar on their way into exile in North Africa 1492 summer after the death of the former duke his son and heir Juan Alfonso Perez de Guzman third duke of Medina Sidonia saw his lordship over Gibraltar reluctantly renewed by the Catholic monarchs 1497 – Gibraltar became the main base in the conquest of Melilla by the troops of the Duke of Medina Sidonia. 1501 – 2 December – Acknowledging the importance of the town, the Catholic monarchs asked the Duke of Medina Sidonia for the return of Gibraltar to the domains of the crown. The Duke accepted the royal request and ceded the town to the monarchs. 1502 – 2 January, Garcilaso de la Vega took possession of the town on behalf of the Queen Isabella I of Castile. 1502 – 10 July, by a royal warrant passed in Toledo by Isabella I of Castile, Gibraltar was granted its coat of arms, "...an escutcheon on which the upper two-thirds shall be a white field and on the said field set a red castle, and below the said castle, on the other third of the escutcheon, which must be a red field in which there must be a white line between the castle and the said red field, there shall be a golden key which hangs by a chain from the said castle, as are here figured." The castle and key remain the arms of Gibraltar to this day. 1506 – Alleging a false donation by the King Philip I of Castile, the Duke of Medina Sidonia attempted to recover Gibraltar by besieging the town. The siege was unsuccessful and the Duke was admonished by the Regency and forced to pay a fee to the town. The town received the title of Most Loyal City. Tenth Siege of Gibraltar, the Duke died in 1507. 1516 the 14th of March Spain becomes a united kingdom under Charles the 1st 1540 the 8th of September corsairs from the Barbary coast ruled by Barbarossa landed at Gibraltar in 16 galleys looting the town and taking away many captives 1552 after the requests from the inhabitants of the town Charles the 1st of Spain the emperor Charles V sent the Italian engineer Giovanni Battista Calvi to strengthen the defenses of the town a wall was built, nowadays known as Charles V Wall, also a ditch by the wall of the town and a drawbridge at the landport Puerta de Tierra. 1567 Juan Mateos turned his large house in the upper town into a hospital. It was Gibraltar's first hospital, and remained on the same site serving the people of Gibraltar for almost four and a half centuries. 1606 The Moriscos the descendants of the Muslim inhabitants in Spain were expelled from Spain by King Philip III. Many passed through Gibraltar on their way into exile in North Africa. 1607 the 25th of April during the 80 years war between the United Provinces and the King of Spain a Dutch fleet surprised and engaged a Spanish fleet anchored at the Bay of Gibraltar Battle of Gibraltar 1621 second Battle of Gibraltar on which a Spanish squadron crushed the VOC at the Strait of Gibraltar Battle of Gibraltar 1621 1649 – Typhoid epidemic in the town. 1656 – In a letter to Councillor General Montague afterwards Earl of Sandwich, general at sea and one of the Protector's personal friends, Cromwell mentioned the necessity of securing a permanent base at the entry of the Mediterranean, preferably Gibraltar the first suggestion for the occupation of Gibraltar as a naval base had been made at an English council of war held at sea on 20 October 1625. The War of the Spanish Succession 
1700 the 1st of November King Charles II of Spain died leaving no descendants in the autumn he had made a will bequeathing the whole of the Spanish possessions to Prince Philip of Bourbon, a grandson of Louis XIV backed by France. The other pretender, an Austrian Habsburg, Archduke Charles, supported by the Holy Roman Empire, England and the Netherlands did not accept Charles II's testament. 1701 September, England, the Netherlands and Austria signed the Treaty of The Hague. By this treaty, they accepted Philippe of Anjou as King of Spain, but allotted Austria the Spanish territories in Italy and the Spanish Netherlands. England and the Netherlands, meanwhile, were to retain their commercial rights in Spain. Later, in 1703, Portugal, Savoy and some German states joined the alliance. 1702 May, formal beginning of the War of the Spanish Succession. 1703 – 12 February – The Archduke Charles was proclaimed King of Castile and Aragon in Vienna. He took the name of Charles III. The Gibraltar capture There is a common discrepancy in the chronology between Spanish and British sources, the reason being that England still used the Julian calendar. By 1704 the Julian calendar was 11 days behind the Gregorian, and the siege thus began on 21 July according to the Julian 1704 – 1 August NS, the 21st of July OS during the War of the Spanish Succession, and when returning from a failed expedition to Barcelona, an Anglo-Dutch fleet, under the command of Sir George Rook, chief commander of the Alliance Navy, began a new siege the 11th siege of the town. They demanded its unconditional surrender and an oath of loyalty to the Habsburg pretender to the Spanish throne, the Archduke Charles. The governor of Gibraltar, Diego de Salinas, refused the ultimatum. A brigade of Dutch Royal Marines and Royal Marines, 1,800 strong, under the command of Prince George of Hesse Darmstadt, chief commander of the Alliance Army in Spain, began to besiege Gibraltar, in the name of the Archduke Charles. A small group of Spaniards, mainly Catalans, were integrated in the troops of the Prince of Hesse. 1704 Night of 3-4 August, heavy shelling targeted the castle and the town. 1704 4 August, the governor Diego de Salinas surrendered the town to Prince George of Hesse, who took it in the name of Archduke, as Charles III, King of Castile and Aragon. This was the end of the 11th siege of Gibraltar a map on the situation of attacking forces can be seen in the exact beginning of the English-British control of Gibraltar is hard to determine. From the 18th century, Spanish sources reported that immediately after the takeover of the city, Sir George Rook, the British admiral, on his own initiative caused the British flag to be hoisted, and took possession of the rock in name of Anne, Queen of Great Britain, whose government ratified the occupation. On the other hand, even the British or the Gibraltarians sometimes date the beginning of British sovereignty in 1704 for instance, in its speech at the United Nations in 1994, the Gibraltar chief minister at the time, Joe Bassano, stated that Gibraltar has been a British colony ever since it was taken by Britain in 1704. Also, some British sources have accounted the flag story he Rook had the Spanish flag hauled down and the English flag hoisted in its stead. Rook's men quickly raised the British flag and Rook claimed the rock in the name of Queen Anne, or Sir George Rook, the British Admiral, on his own responsibility caused the British flag to be hoisted, and took possession in name of Queen Anne, whose government ratified the occupation. However, it is claimed by present-day historians, both Spanish and British, that this version is apocryphal since no contemporary source accounts it. Isidro Sepulveda, William Jackson and George Hills explicitly refute it Sepulveda points out that if such a fact had actually happened, it would have caused a big crisis in the alliance supporting the Archduke Charles. George Hills explains that the story was first accounted by the Marquis of San Felipe, who wrote his book, Comentarios de la Guerra de España y Historia de su Rey Felipe v el Animoso. In 1725, more than 20 years after the fact, the Marquis was not an eyewitness and cannot be considered as a reliable source for the facts that took place in Gibraltar in 1704. As Hills concludes, the flag myth may perhaps be allowed now to disappear from Anglo-Spanish polemics. On the one side it has been used to support a claim to the rock by right of conquest, on the other to Pour on Britain obloquy for perfidy. 
What does seem nowadays proved is that the British troops who had landed on the South Mole area raised their flag to signal their presence to the ships, and avoid being fired upon by their own side. However, whatever the exact events of the time, Gibraltar ceased being under the rule of Philip V of Spain in 1704. A statue to Sir George Rook was erected in 2004 as part of the tercentenary celebrations. 1704-4-7 August. After the surrender, despite the efforts of the senior officers to maintain order, the civil population of Gibraltar suffered at the hands of the troops. Homes were plundered, there were cases of rape, churches were ransacked, religious symbols destroyed, and Catholic churches pressed into service for use as stores or for other military uses. The townspeople took reprisals, murdering Dutchmen and Englishmen and throwing their corpses to wells and cesspits. When discipline was restored, in spite of assurances that Spaniards who wished to remain would enjoy freedom of religion and full civil rights, almost all villagers decided not to run the risk of staying and left in exile. 1704 the 7th of August a dejected procession numbering some 4000 according to most of the sources such as Hills or Jackson filed out of the land port with Queen Isabella's banner at their head and led by the Spanish governor Diego de Salinas the Spanish garrison with their three brass cannon the religious orders the city council and all those inhabitants who did not wish to take the oath of allegiance to Charles III as asked by the terms of surrender they took with them the symbols and objects of Spanish Gibraltar's history, the council and ecclesiastical records, including the historical documents signed by the Spanish Catholic monarchs in 1502, granting Gibraltar's coat of arms, and the statue of the Saint Mary the Crown. Most of them took refuge in the proximity of the nearby chapel of San Roque, possibly hoping for a rapid reconquest of Gibraltar, which never materialized. There, a new settlement was formed, being granted a council two years later 1706, with the name of San Roque, and being considered by the Spanish crown as the heir to the lost town of Gibraltar historical objects and records predating 1704 were subsequently taken to San Roque where they remain to this day, King Philip V of Spain dubbed San Roque as my city of Gibraltar resident in its campo. Others settled down in what today is Los Barrios or even further away, in the ruins of the abandoned city of Algeciras. Only about 70 people remained in the town, most of them religious, people without family or belonging to the Genoese trader colony. See list in 1704 the 24th of August, the Alliance fleet under the command of Rook set sail from Gibraltar and intercepted a joint Spanish-French fleet that attempted to recover Gibraltar by the coast of Malaga, Battle of Velez Malaga. The result was uncertain with heavy losses on both sides, but the Spanish-French fleet was stopped and prevented from arriving at Gibraltar. The First Spanish Siege 12th Siege of Gibraltar 1704 – 5 September, troops of France and Spain under the Marquis of Villadarias, general captain of Andalusia, started to besiege Gibraltar to try to recover it this one would be the 12th Siege of Gibraltar. In the town, the Marine Brigade, still under the command of the British Admiral Sir John Leake, and the Governor, Prince George of Hesse-Darmstadt who had commanded the land forces in August, and reinforced shortly before by a further 400 Royal Marines, held the fortress against repeated attacks. 1704 – The 11th of November, a notable incident during the siege, 500 Spanish volunteer grenadier tried to surprise the garrison after being led up a concealed path to the top of the rock by a Spanish goatherd from Gibraltar, Simón Cesarte. Captain Fisher of the Marines with 17 of his men successfully defended the round tower against their assault. A contemporary report of this noted defense says, Encouraged by the Prince of Hesse, the garrison did more than could humanly be expected, and the English Marines gained an immortal glory." 1705 January – Philip V replaced Villadarias with the Marshal of France de Tesse. 1705 – 7 February – The last assault before the arrival of de Tesse was executed. The Gibraltar Wall was damaged, but French troops refused to go on until the arrival of de Tesse who arrived the day after. The assault becomes unsuccessful. 1705 – The 31st of March, the Count de Tesse gave up the siege and retired. <laughs> During the rest of the war Although nominally in the hands of the Archduke Charles, and garrisoned with both English and Dutch regiments, Britain began to monopolise the rule of the town. 
even if the formal transfer of sovereignty would not take place until the signature of the Treaty of Utrecht, the British governor and garrison become the de facto rulers of the town. 1705 – 2 August, the Archduke Charles stopped over in Gibraltar on his way to the territories of the Crown of Aragon. The Prince of Hesse joined him, thus leaving the town he would die one month later in the Siege of Barcelona. The English Major General John Shrimpton was left as governor appointed by the Archduke Charles on the recommendation of Queen Anne. 1706 – 17 February, Queen Anne though not yet the legal ruler of the territory, declared Gibraltar a free port upon request of the Sultan of Morocco, who wanted Gibraltar being given this status in return for supplying the town. 1707 – 24 December, the first British governor directly appointed by Queen Anne, Roger Elliot, took up residence in the convent of the Franciscan Friars. 1711 – The British government, then in the hands of the Tories, covertly ordered the British Gibraltar governor, Thomas Stanwix, to expel any foreign not British troops to foster Great Britain's sole right to Gibraltar in the negotiations running up between Britain and France. Although he answered positively, he allowed a Dutch regiment to stay. It remained there until March 1713. Topic: British rule. Topic: Treaty of Utrecht. The 11th of April 1713, the territory was subsequently ceded to the Crown of Great Britain in perpetuity by Spain under Article 10 of the Treaties of Utrecht. Despite some military attempts by the Spanish to retake it in the 18th century, most notably in the Great Siege of 1779 to 1783, the rock has remained under British control ever since. In that treaty, Spain ceded Great Britain the full and entire propriety of the town and castle of Gibraltar, together with the port, fortifications, and forts thereunto belonging forever, without any exception or impediment whatsoever." The treaty stipulated that no overland trade between Gibraltar and Spain was to take place, except for emergency provisions in the case that Gibraltar is unable to be supplied by sea. Another condition of the session was that no leave shall be given under any pretense whatsoever, either to Jews or Moors, to reside or have their dwellings in the said town of Gibraltar." This was not respected for long and Gibraltar has had for many years an established Jewish community, along with Muslims from North Africa. Finally, under the treaty, should the British Crown wish to dispose of Gibraltar, that of Spain should be offered the territory first. Topic. Until the Peninsular Wars Between 1713 and 1728, there were seven occasions when British ministers was prepared to bargain Gibraltar away as part of his foreign policy. However, the Parliament frustrated always such attempts, echoing the public opinion in Britain, 1721 March, Philip V of Spain requested the restitution of Gibraltar to proceed to the renewal of the trade licenses of Great Britain with the Spanish possessions in America. 1721 1 June, George I sent a letter to Philip V promising, to make use of the first favourable opportunity to regulate this article the demand touching the restitution of Gibraltar, with the consent of my Parliament. However, the British Parliament never endorsed such promise. 1727 February to June, second of the sieges by Spain tried to recapture Gibraltar, 13th siege of Gibraltar. Depending on the sources, Spanish troops were between 12,000 and 25,000. British defenders were 1,500 at the beginning of the siege, increasing up to about 5,000. After a five-month siege with several unsuccessful and costly attempts, Spanish troops gave up and retired. 1729 At the end of the Anglo-Spanish War of 1727-1729, the Treaty of Seville confirming all previous treaties including the Treaty of Utrecht allowed Great Britain to keep Menorca and Gibraltar. 1730 – A Belgian engineer, the Marquis of Verboom, chief engineer of the Spanish Royal Engineer Corps, who had taken part in the 1727 siege, arrived in San Roque commissioned by the Spanish government to design a line of fortifications across the isthmus. Fort San Felipe and Fort Santa Barbara were built. 
The fortifications, known to the British as the Spanish Lines, and to Spain as La Línea de Contravalación were the origin of modern-day town of La Línea de la Concepción. 1749–1754 Lieutenant General Humphrey Bland is the governor of Gibraltar. He compiles the twelve «articles» or regulations that ruled the administration of Gibraltar for over sixty years. First article, dealing with property, establishes that only Protestants may own property. In 1754 the population settled at around 6,000 people, with the garrison and their dependents constituting about three quarters of it. The civilian population comprised mainly Genoese and Jews. 1776 – 23 February, one of the heaviest storms ever recorded in Gibraltar. The lower part of the town was flooded. Line wall was breached along 100 meters. 1779 – June, in the midst of the American Revolutionary War, Spain declared war against Great Britain as France had done the year before. 1779 July – Start of the Great Siege of Gibraltar 14th and last military siege. This was an action by French and Spanish forces to wrest control of Gibraltar from the established British garrison. The garrison, led by George Augustus Eliot, later First Baron Hethfield of Gibraltar, survived all attacks and a blockade of supplies. 1782 – 13 September – Start of an assault involving 100,000 men, 48 ships and 450 cannon. The British garrison survived. 1783 February. By now the siege was over, and George Augustus Eliot was awarded the Knight of the Bath and was created first Baron Hethfield of Gibraltar. The Treaties of Versailles which ceded Menorca and Florida to Spain, reaffirmed previous treaties in the rest of issues, thus not affecting to Gibraltar. In 1782, work on the Great Siege Tunnels started. The tunnels became a great and complex system of underground fortifications which nowadays criss-crosses the inside of the rock. Once the siege was over, the fortifications were rebuilt and, in the following century, the walls were lined with Portland limestone. Such stone gave the walls their present white appearance. The successful resistance in the Great Siege is attributed to several factors, the improvement in fortifications by Colonel later General Sir William Green in 1769, the British naval supremacy, which translated into support of the Navy, the competent command by General George Augustus Eliot, and an appropriately sized garrison. As in the early years of the British period, during the siege the British government considered to exchange Gibraltar for some Spanish possession. However, by the end of the siege the fortress and its heroic response to the siege was now acquiring a sort of cult status amongst the population in Britain and no exchange however attractive, was likely to be acceptable. 1800 Malta is taken over by Great Britain. The possession of Malta, confirmed by the Treaty of Paris in 1814, increased the attractiveness of Gibraltar since controlling both Gibraltar and Malta meant the effective mastery of the Mediterranean Sea by the Royal Navy. 1802 – Several mutinies among some regiments garrisoned in Gibraltar. 1802 – The first merchant token to bear the name Gibraltar albeit spelt Gibraltar was issued by Robert Keeling in order to alleviate a shortage of copper. 1803 – June – Admiral Nelson arrived in Gibraltar as commander-in-chief Mediterranean. 1804 – Great epidemic of malignant fever broke out. Although traditionally labeled as yellow fever. Now it is thought to have been typhus. Nearly 5,000 people died. 1805 January, the Great Epidemic ended. Over a third of the civilian population 5,946 people died. 1805 21st of October, Battle of Trafalgar 1805 28th of October, HMS Victory was towed into Gibraltar bringing Nelson's body aboard. The Trafalgar Cemetery still exists today in Gibraltar. 1806 – Gibraltar was made a Catholic Apostolic Vicariate until then Gibraltar belonged to the See of Cadiz. Since 1840 the vicar has always been the Bishop of Gibraltar. 1810 – Britain and Spain became allies against Napoleon. 1810 – February – The governor of Gibraltar removed the Spanish forts of San Felipe and Santa Barbara, located on the northern boundary of the neutral ground. Fearing that the forts might fall into French hands, Lieutenant General Sir Colin Campbell instructed Royal Engineers to blow the forts up. 
Such a task was carried out on 14 February together with the demolition of the rest of the fortifications of the Spanish lines. According to George Hills, there are no primary sources that could explain whether such a demolition was requested or authorized by any Spanish or British authority. According to him, over time, three different theories have emerged. A. Campbell ordered the demolition on his own authority B. under instructions from the British government C. upon request of Spanish General Castaños, who was at the time in Cadiz. Spanish authors from 1840 have usually favoured theory B, while British ones have supported C. As long as there is no contemporary source or dispatch on the topic, Hills does not personally discard a considering it the most likely possibility. During the Peninsular War, contingents from the Gibraltar garrison were sent to aid Spanish resistance to the French at Cadiz and Tarifa. As William Jackson describes, gradually Gibraltar changed from being the objective of the San Roque garrison into the supply base and refuge in time of trouble for the Spanish forces operating in southern Andalusia. Until the Second World War 1814 – Outbreak of malignant fever 1815 – The civilian population of Gibraltar was about 10,000 people two and a half times the size of the garrison. Genoese constituted about one-third of the civilian population a large number of immigrants had arrived from Genoa at the beginning of the century. The rest were mainly Spaniards and Portuguese fled from the war, and Jews from Morocco. 1817 – The first civil judge was established. 1830 – The British government changes the status of Gibraltar from the town and garrison of Gibraltar to the Crown Colony of Gibraltar. Thus, the responsibility for its administration is transferred from the War Office to the new Colonial Office. Legal institutions and the Gibraltar Police Force were established. 1832 The Church of the Holy Trinity, built for the needs of Anglican worshippers among Gibraltar's civil population, is completed. Ten years later, it will become the Cathedral of the Holy Trinity. 1842 – 21 August, the Church of England Diocese of Gibraltar was founded by letters patent and took over the pastoral care of the chaplaincies and congregations from Portugal to the Caspian Sea. George Tomlinson is enthroned as the first Bishop of Gibraltar. The Church of the Holy Trinity, Gibraltar becomes cathedral for the diocese. 1842 – Official coins of the realm were struck for Gibraltar by the Royal Mint. Coins were issued in one-half, one and two court denominations. 1869 – The Suez Canal was opened. It heavily increased the strategic value of the rock in the route from the United Kingdom to India. Gibraltar economy, mainly based on commercial shipping and import-export trade, takes a new income source with the opening of a coaling station for the new steam ships. 1891 – The 17th of March, America-bound steamer Utopia slammed in heavy weather into the iron-plated British battleship HMS Anson and sank in the Bay of Gibraltar, 576 people died. 1894 – The construction of the dockyards started. 1908 – The 5th of August, the British ambassador in Madrid informed the Spanish Minister of State as an act of courtesy, of the British government's intention to build a fence along the line of British sentries on the isthmus to prevent smuggling and reduce sentry duty. According to the British government, the fence was erected one metre inside British territory. Spain currently does not recognise the fence as the valid border, since it claims the fence was built on Spanish soil. Even though Spain, the United Kingdom and Gibraltar are all part of the European Union, the border fence is still relevant today since Gibraltar is outside the customs union. The border crossing is open 24 hours a day as required by EU law. 1921 Gibraltar was granted a city council status in recognition for its contribution to the British war efforts in World War I. The council had a small minority of elected persons. First elections held in Gibraltar. 1936 to 1939 after the United Kingdom recognized the Franco's regime in 1938 Gibraltar had two Spanish consulates a republican one and a nationalistic one several incidents took place during the Spanish Civil War which affected Gibraltar in May 1937 HMS Arethusa had to tow HMS Hunter into port after Hunter hit a mine off Almeria that killed and wounded several British sailors in June 1937, the German pocket battleship Deutschland arrived in Gibraltar with dead and wounded after Republican planes bombed it in Ibiza in retaliation for the Condor Legion's bombing of Guernica. 
In August 1938, the Republican destroyer José Luis Díaz took refuge in Gibraltar after taking casualties from the guns of the national cruiser Canarias. The one incident that resulted in the death of Gibraltarians occurred on 31 January 1938 when the insurgent submarine General Sanurio sank the SS Endymion, a small Gibraltar registered freighter taking a cargo of coal to Cartagena, which was chartered by the Republican government. Eleven members of her crew were killed. Second World War and after The history of Gibraltar from the Second World War is characterized by two main elements, the increasing autonomy and self-government achieved by Gibraltarians and the re-emergence of the Spanish claim, especially during the years of the Francoist dictatorship. During World War II the rock was again turned into a fortress and the civilian residents of Gibraltar were evacuated. Initially, in May 1940, 16,700 people went to French Morocco. However, after the French-German armistice and the subsequent destruction of the French fleet at Mers el Kebir, Algeria by the British Navy in July 1940, the French Moroccan authorities asked all Gibraltarian evacuees to be removed, 12,000 went to Britain, while about 3,000 went to Madeira or Jamaica, with the rest moving to Spain or Tanger. Control of Gibraltar gave the Allied powers control of the entry to the Mediterranean Sea the other side of the strait being Spanish territory, and thus non-belligerent. The rock was a key part of the Allied supply lines to Malta and North Africa and base of the British Navy Force H, and prior to the war the racecourse on the Isthmus was converted into an airbase and a concrete runway constructed 1938. The repatriation of the civilians started in 1944 and proceeded until 1951, causing considerable suffering and frustration. However, most of the population had returned by 1946. 1940 – 4 July, French bombers, based in French Morocco, carried out a retaliatory air raid over Gibraltar as a reprisal for the destruction of the French fleet at Mers el Kebir, Algeria, by the Force H. About 1,300 French sailors were killed and about 350 were wounded in the action against the French fleet. 1941 – Germany planned to occupy Gibraltar and presumably handed over to Spain in Operation Felix which was due to start on 10 January 1941. It was cancelled because the Spanish government were reluctant to let the Wehrmacht enter Spain and then attack against the ROC, its civilians or the British army from Spanish soil, because Franco feared that it may have been impossible to remove the Wehrmacht afterwards. In any case, Hitler was too busy elsewhere in Europe to give this much priority. 1940–1943 Gibraltar Harbour was attacked many times by Italian commando frogmen operating from Algeciras. Underwater warfare and countermeasures were developed by Lionel Crabb. 1942 – September, a small group of Gibraltarians, who remained in the town serving in the British Army, joined a mechanic official, Albert Risso, to create the Gibraltarians Association, the starting point of what became the Association for the Advancement of Civil Rights officially established in December that year, the first political party in Gibraltar. Joshua Hassan a young lawyer then, later Sir and Chief Minister was among the leading members of the association. The AACR was the dominant party in Gibraltar politics for the last third of the 20th century. 1942 – 8 November – Operation Torch launched with support from Gibraltar. 1944 – April – The situation in Gibraltar is considered safe and the first of the evacuees return to Gibraltar. 1946 – The United Kingdom inscribed Gibraltar in the list of non-self-governing territories kept by the UN Special Committee on Decolonization. 1950 – Gibraltar's first legislative council was opened. 1951 – The return process of the evacuees finishes. It was delayed due to an initial shortage of shipping and then of housing. The evacuation was a key element in the creation of the national conscience of Gibraltarians. The experience of evacuation had bonded the Gibraltarian together as a nation. 1951 – 27 April, the RFA Bedenham explodes while docked in Gibraltar, killing 13, damaging many buildings in the town and delaying the housing program essential for repatriation. 1954 – This was the 250th anniversary of its capture. 
Queen Elizabeth II visited Gibraltar, which angered General Franco, who renewed its claim to sovereignty, which had not been actively pursued for over 150 years. This led to the closure of the Spanish consulate and to the imposition of restrictions on freedom of movement between Gibraltar and Spain. By the 1960s, motor vehicles were being restricted or banned from crossing the border, while only Spanish nationals employed on the rock being allowed to enter Gibraltar. 1955 At the United Nations, Spain, which had just been admitted to membership, initiated a claim to the territory, arguing that the principle of territorial integrity, not self-determination, applied in the case of the decolonization of Gibraltar, and that the United Kingdom should cede sovereignty of the rock to Spain. Madrid gained diplomatic support from countries in Latin America, with the UN General Assembly passing resolutions 2231, 21, Question of Gibraltar and 2,353-22, Question of Gibraltar. 1965 April, the British government published a white paper dealing with the question of Gibraltar and the Treaty of Utrecht. 1966 In response, the Spanish Foreign Office Minister Fernando Castiella, published and presented to the Spanish courts the Spanish Red Book, named so because of its cover, its reference as Negociaciones sobre Gibraltar. Documentos presentados a las Cortes Españolas por el Ministro de Asuntos Exteriores. Madrid, 1967. 1967 The first sovereignty referendum was held on 10 September, in which Gibraltar's voters were asked whether they wished to either pass under Spanish sovereignty, or remain under British sovereignty, with institutions of self government. Over 99% voted in favor of remaining British. 1968 A group of six Gibraltarian lawyers and businessmen, calling themselves the Palomos or Doves, advocated a political settlement with Spain in a letter published in the Gibraltar Chronicle, and met with Spanish Foreign Office officials a meeting was even held with the Spanish Foreign Office Minister to try and bring this about. This provoked widespread public hostility in Gibraltar with attacks on their homes and properties and civil unrest. Things quickly calmed down, although today the term retains a negative meaning in Gibraltar politics. 1969 – 30 May – A new constitution for Gibraltar was introduced by the United Kingdom Parliament, under the initiative of the British government Gibraltar Constitution Order 1969. Under it, Gibraltar attained full internal self-government, with an elected House of Assembly. The City Council and the Legislative Council disappeared. The preamble to the constitution stated that her Majesty's Government will never enter into arrangements under which the people of Gibraltar would pass under the sovereignty of another state against their freely and democratically expressed wishes." 1969 – 8 June, in response, Spain closed the border with Gibraltar, and severed all communication links. For about 13 years, the land border was closed from the Spanish side, to try to isolate the territory. The closure affected both sides of the border. Gibraltarians with families in Spain had to go by ferry to Tangier, Morocco, and from there to the Spanish port of Algeciras, while many Spanish workers by then about 4,800, 16 years before, about 12,500 Spanish workmen entered Gibraltar every day lost their jobs in Gibraltar. 1969 Major Robert, later Sir Robert Paliza of the Integration with Britain Party IWBP, was elected Chief Minister in alliance with the independent group led by Peter Azola. 1971 The United Kingdom government led by Heath considered the possibility of exchanging sovereignty for a 999-year lease on Gibraltar, as it was felt it had ceased to be of any military or economic value. The proposals remained secret until 2002. 1972 Joshua Hassan of the Association for the Advancement of Civil Rights AACR was returned to power. AACR rebrands as GLP, AACR Gibraltar Labour Party, AACR in an attempt to develop a more clearly working class image. 1972 Gibraltar TGWU hold a six-day general strike, pressing the Ministry of Defence, Gibraltar's largest employer, for better pay and conditions for workers. The strike ends successfully with a £1.85 increase in basic pay rates, and is seen as a catalyst for increased working class solidarity in the pursuit of social, economic and political change. TGWU claims a rise of overall union density within the labour market to around 55% following the strike. 
1973 Gibraltar joined the European Economic Community alongside the United Kingdom. 1975 The British Foreign Office Minister Roy Hattersley ruled out integration with the UK, and stated that any constitutional change would have to involve a Spanish dimension. This position was reaffirmed the following year when the British government rejected the House of Assembly's proposals for constitutional reform Hattersley Memorandum. The IWBP broke up and was succeeded by the Democratic Party of British Gibraltar DPBG, led first by Maurice Zibaras, formerly of the IWBP, and subsequently by Peter Azola. 1975 Spanish dictator General Francisco Franco died, but nothing changed in relation to Gibraltar. 1980 – 10 April, the British and Spanish Ministers of Foreign Affairs, Lord Carrington and Marcelino Oreja, signs the Lisbon Agreement regarding the Gibraltar problem stating that the communications between Gibraltar and Spain would be re-established, and restating both governments' positions. The measures agreed were not implemented. 1980 – July, the Anglican Diocese of Gibraltar is amalgamated with the jurisdiction of North and Central Europe to become the Diocese of Gibraltar in Europe. The Cathedral of the Holy Trinity, Gibraltar remains Anglican Cathedral for the Diocese. 1981 The British Nationality Act 1981 effectively made Gibraltar a dependent territory and removed the right of entry into the UK of British dependent territory citizens. After a short campaign Gibraltarians were offered full British citizenship history of nationality in Gibraltar. The Act was ratified in 1983. 1982 – 15 December, the reopening of the border was initially delayed due to the war between the United Kingdom and Argentina over the Falkland Islands. Upon the change in the Spanish government, with the Socialist Party in power, the border was partially reopened only pedestrians, resident in Gibraltar or Spanish nationals were allowed to cross the border by Spain, only one crossing each way per day was allowed. Restrictions on the land border continued until 2006, although there are still occasionally issues related to the crossing. 1984 – Spain applied to join the European Community, succeeding in 1986. Under the Brussels Agreement the 27th of November 1984 signed between the governments of the United Kingdom and Spain, the former agreed to enter into discussions with Spain over Gibraltar, including by first time the issues of sovereignty. The border was fully reopened. 1987 – 2 December, a proposal for joint control of Gibraltar Airport with Spain met with widespread local opposition which was expressed in a protest march to the convent. Chief Minister Sir Joshua Hassan resigned at the end of the year and was succeeded by Adolfo Canepa. 1988 – Gibraltar Socialist Labour Party GSLP leader Joe Bassano was elected as Chief Minister, and firmly ruled out any discussions with Spain over sovereignty and shared use of the airport. 1988 – 7 March, the Special Air Service of the British Army shot dead three unarmed members of the Provisional IRA walking towards the frontier, claiming they were making suspicious movements. Operation Flavius. A subsequent search led to the discovery of a car containing a large amount of Semtex explosive in Spain, which they had planned to use to bomb the changing of the guard ceremony a few days later. 1991 – The British Army effectively withdrew from Gibraltar, leaving only the locally recruited Royal Gibraltar Regiment, although the Royal Air Force and Royal Navy remain. Spain made various proposals involving the sovereignty of Gibraltar, which were rejected by all parties in the Gibraltar House of Assembly. 1991 – The Spanish Spanish Socialist Workers' Party PSOE government of Felipe González proposed joint sovereignty over Gibraltar with the United Kingdom. A similar proposal was advocated by Peter Cumming, formerly of the Gibraltar Social Democrats GSD, in which the ROC would become a self-governing condominium or royal city, with the British and Spanish monarchs as joint heads of state. 1995 GSLP government lost popular support as a result of tobacco smuggling activity. To prevent this activity the fast launches were made illegal and confiscated. This resulted in a riot in July 1995. 1996 In a general election, Joe Bassano was replaced by Peter Caruana of the GSD, who while favoring dialogue with Spain, also ruled out any deals on sovereignty. 
1997 The Partido Popular Spanish Foreign Minister, Abel Matutes made proposals under which Gibraltar would be under joint sovereignty for 50 years, before being fully incorporated into Spain, as an autonomous region, similar to Catalonia or the Basque Country, but these were rejected by the British government. 2000 an agreement was reached between the UK and Spain over recognition of competent authorities in Gibraltar. Spain had a policy of non-recognition of the government of Gibraltar as a competent authority, therefore refusing to recognize Gibraltar's courts, police and government departments, driving licenses, and identity cards. Under the agreement, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in London would act as a post box, through which Gibraltar's police and other government departments could communicate with their counterparts in Spain. In addition, identity documents issued by the government of Gibraltar now featured the words United Kingdom. 2000 May 2001 May, following an incident at sea the nuclear submarine HMS Tireless S88 was repaired in Gibraltar causing diplomatic tension with Spain. Before consenting to the repair, the government of Gibraltar insisted on a full safety assessment. Topic. 21st century 2001 — The UK government announced plans to reach a final agreement with Spain over the future of Gibraltar, which would involve shared sovereignty, however agreement was not reached due to the opposition of the Gibraltarians. 2002 — on 12 July the Foreign Secretary, Jack Straw, in a formal statement in the House of Commons, said that after 12 months of negotiation the British government and Spain are in broad agreement on many of the principles that should underpin a lasting settlement of Spain's sovereignty claim, which included the principle that Britain and Spain should share sovereignty over Gibraltar. Political commentators saw this as an attempt by Britain to get Spain to help counterbalance France and Germany's domination of the European Union. Straw visited Gibraltar to explain his ideas and was left in no doubt they had no support. 2002 In November the government of Gibraltar called Gibraltar's second sovereignty referendum on the proposal, it achieved a turnout of 88% of which 98.97% of the electorate did not support the position taken by Mr. Straw. The actual voting was as follows, 18,176 voted representing 87.9% of the electorate. There were 89 papers spoiled of which 72 were blank 18,087 of which 187 voted yes, and 17,900 voted no. The referendum was supervised by a team of international observers headed by the Labour MP Gerald Kaufman, who certified that it had been held fairly, freely and democratically. 2002 The British Overseas Territories Act 2002 made provision for the renaming of British dependent territories as British Overseas Territories, which changed the status of Gibraltar to an overseas territory. This act granted full British citizenship to British overseas territories, which was already available to Gibraltarians since 1983. 2004 – August – Gibraltar celebrated 300 years of British rule. Spanish officials labeled this as the celebration of 300 years of British occupation. Despite this, Gibraltar celebrated its tercentenary, with a number of events on 4 August, including the population encircling the rock holding hands, and granting the freedom of the city to the Royal Navy. 2004 The 18th of November, a joint commission Commission Mixta de Cooperación y Colaboración was established between the Mancomunidad de Municipios de la Comarca del Campo de Gibraltar, the Council Association. Association of the Campo de Gibraltar, the historic Spanish county that surrounds Gibraltar, and the government of Gibraltar. 2004 The 28th of October, the governments of the United Kingdom and Spain agreed to allow the government of Gibraltar equal representation in a new open agenda discussion forum, so-called tripartite talks. 2005 July, first tripartite talks took place in Faro, Portugal. 2006 August, the following was announced, the three participants confirmed that the necessary preparatory work related to agreements on the airport, pensions, telephones and fence, border issues, carried out during the last 18 months, has been agreed. Accordingly, they have decided to convene in Spain the first ministerial meeting of the Tripartite Forum of Dialogue on Gibraltar on 18 September 2006. 2006 – The 18 September Córdoba Agreement, the British and Spanish Foreign Ministers and the Chief Minister of Gibraltar met at the Palacio de Viana, Córdoba and announced the following, 1. Spain agrees to recognize Gibraltar's International Dialing Code 350 and allow mobile roaming. 
2. Spanish restrictions on civil flights at the airport will be removed. A new terminal building will also be constructed, allowing a direct passage to, from the north side of the fence, frontier in order to overcome problems of terminology relating to references to the words frontier or fence. The phrase fence, frontier is used in the documents. 3. There will be normality of traffic flow at the fence, frontier. 4. Britain agrees to pay uprated pensions to those Spanish citizens who lost their livelihoods when the border was unilaterally closed by Francisco Franco in 1969. 5. A branch of the Instituto Cervantes will be opened in Gibraltar. This agreement is seen as a major milestone in Gibraltar's history. 2006 November, the new constitution was drafted and later approved by the people of Gibraltar in a referendum. It was described as non colonial in nature by Britain and Gibraltar. However, UK Europe Minister Jim Murphy, told the Foreign Affairs Committee of the House of Commons said that new constitution but he stated that, "...he has never described it as an end to the colonial relationship," although others have. 2006 the 16th of December, the first passenger carrying Iberia aircraft landed in Gibraltar flying directly from Madrid, and a daily scheduled service started. The service was later reduced in frequency and terminated in September 2008. 2007 the 10th of February Spain lifted restrictions on Gibraltar's ability to expand and modernize its telecommunications infrastructure These included a refusal to recognize international direct dialing IDD code which restricted the expansion of Gibraltar's telephone numbering plan and the prevention of roaming arrangements for Gibraltar's GSM mobile phones in Spain 2007 The 1st of May GB Airways began scheduled flights between Madrid and Gibraltar which were later withdrawn in September. 2007 The 29th of June with a unanimous vote in the Gibraltar Parliament local MPs approved new legislation that removes the phrases the colony and UK possession from Gibraltar's laws. 2007 The 11th of October the Gibraltar Social Democrats were returned to government for a fourth term after a general election. 2008 the 18th of June in the annual UN Special Committee on Decolonization meeting on the Gibraltar question Peter Caruana chief minister of Gibraltar stated that he would not attend future meetings as the Gibraltar government is of the opinion that there is no longer any need for us to look to the committee to help us bring about our decolonization the committee agreed that the question of Gibraltar would be discussed again next year 2008 the 22nd of September it was announced that the remaining Iberia flights to Madrid would cease operation at the end of September 2008 due to economic reasons namely lack of demand point two zero zero eight the 10th of October the bulk carrier MV Fedra ran aground on rocks at Europa point and broke in two the crew were safely rescued but some of the fuel oil escaped in the very bad weather the captain was later arrested 2009 In May there were a number of Spanish incursions into British waters around Gibraltar leading to intervention by the police and a diplomatic protest by the UK. 2009-7 December 4 Armed Civil Guard officers are detained after three landed in Gibraltar in pursuit of two suspected smugglers, who were themselves arrested. The Spanish Interior Minister Alfredo Pérez Rubalcaba personally telephoned Chief Minister Peter Caruana to apologise, stating that there were no political intentions behind the incident. The chief minister was prepared to accept it had not been a political act. Spanish officers were released by the police the following day, who said that inquiries established that the Guardia Civil mistakenly entered Gibraltar territorial waters in hot pursuit and have since apologized for their actions. 2009 The 12th of December Miss Gibraltar Kion Alderino wins the title Miss World in Johannesburg. Her homecoming five days later is a major public event in Gibraltar. 2009 – 17 December – A ferry service restarts between Gibraltar and Algeciras after a gap of 40 years. 2010 – In order to overcome budget problems which follow the departure and arrest of the previous mayor, the mayor of La Linea de la Concepcion proposes to charge a toll for entry to Gibraltar and to tax telephone lines to Gibraltar. The proposals are opposed by the Spanish government and the Gibraltar government has dismissed concerns. 2011 GSLP – Liberal Alliance returned to power in the 2011 general election, bringing to an end 15 years of GSD government. Fabian Picardo becomes chief minister. <laughs> 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 
Topic See also History of Spain History of the United Kingdom Topic Notes Topic Bibliography Hills, George, nineteen seventy four Rock of Contention. A History of Gibraltar. London, Robert Hale. ISBN 0-7091-4352-4. Jackson, William The Rock of the Gibraltarians. A History of Gibraltar 2nd ed. Grendon, Northamptonshire, UK, Gibraltar Books. ISBN 0-948466-14-6. Sepulveda, Isidro Gibraltar. La razón y la fuerza Gibraltar. The Reason and the Force, in Spanish. Madrid, Alianza Editorial. ISBN 84-206-4184-7. Chapter 2. La lucha por Gibraltar. The Struggle for Gibraltar is available online PDF. Peter Gold 2005. Gibraltar, British or Spanish? Routledge. ISBN 0-415-34795-5topic external links a timeline of gibraltar's history in gibraltar for kids history of gibraltar detailed in discovergibraltar.com government of gibraltar website history of gibraltar writing the rock of gibraltar by mg sanchez an online anthology of historical texts dealing with gibraltar from 1720 to 1890 finlayson thomas james the Struggle for Democracy. Gibraltar Chronicle. Archived from the original on 28 April 2004. Retrieved 21 October 2008. A History of the Political Evolution of Gibraltar from the 19th Century to 2000. The mongrel race called Rock Scorpions, The Negation of Gibraltarian Identity and the Politics of Contempt. An essay by Dr. M. G. Sanchez. Gibraltar Waters a special conservation Euroweekly news, English language newspaper in Spain.